So the the curious thing for me actually is the volley bear. I think stuck through the draft draft in the last game. I thought we'd see a little bit more volley bear here. Potential for Easter to just ban it away. Um, although you're still looking down like twisted face. Some of these picks that we did highlight as high priority here in this draft. Yep. These uh, global ults will be removed from the mid lane, and there's nothing that WE can do about it. I think you start things off by locking in this set. We mentioned it in the first draft, how it's a high priority for both teams. And we have seen flexibility coming through for WE with this pick. Obviously, Beishan can take this one missing, but we have seen Morgan play it as well this split. The ones for me now, the standout picks here are that Folly Bear, but also when you start looking towards the likes of Tichima, that Syndra could be such a crucial pick here. We've seen Tichima have great performances on that Syndra, and it has been left open in this draft. Ash going to be locked in here for Rats, as they're going to be the ones that have this hard engage option from the AD carry position. And I wouldn't be too surprised to see Wei go for an early jungle pick here. Obviously, his Graves was taken off of the board from things like this Volley Bear still available. It's not something that we've seen a lot out of E-Star, aside from Xiaobai in the top lane. Obviously, it's CJJ playing here today. So we'll have to see where that's going to go for the side of E-Star. I wouldn't be surprised to see Wei pick it up, though, as he has played it one time. I imagine it'll be Wei. Look, it's not like a jungler can play Volley Bear at the moment. He's so strong in the jungle with how quick he clears, the options that it gives you for ganks, and even how strong you can be in those mid-game fights. So they're going to be happy to get the Volley Bear and the Ash a nice duo coordination there when you have these engaged tools. On the upside, though, WE looking to see if they can secure Ezreal here for Jomong. That one of the few, apart from like Caitlyn and stuff, late game carries that we're really seeing with the Felios dropping out of the meta to a certain extent, or at least going down in that priority. And now we're also looking to see what Teacher Ma will grab here as his third pick. I personally would love to see either the jungler or that Syndra locked in here. And when we've seen so much priority or at least attention towards this mid lane so far, I think, okay, never mind. I was going to say Syndra would make a lot of sense here. The Syndra, he's saving as his playoffs pocket pick, I guess. He's not interested in that one just yet. Going with the Silas once again. It looked great in game number one. But in game number one, it was specifically against that Twisted Fate. It was picked as the answer. This time around, they're just going to blind it. And it looks like Eastar are going to answer with a Syndra. And this is fun, fun favored. I mean, you can... Oh, never mind. Okay. Never mind. So... So now there... Syndra's getting banned. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I think here you can start hard focusing mid lane as WE and give yourself a really strong matchup. Um, fun, fun has played a lot of different champions, though, in this mid lane, so be curious to see what he does decide to go with. But Chelsea getting his hand on the bard. Chelsea's a very good bard player, and we have seen him put these hard carry performances in. So be curious to see if we can see something similar. And the combo that we saw in that last game between the Enchanted for Solaro and those Tempered Fates, setting up E-Star for success in those two games. Well, we know missing for the hook champions, that's where he made his name. And we are going to see the Nautilus band away. And when you look through the uh, top picks for Fun Fun. We've got Galio, we've got Set, we've got Zoe, we've got Cassidy, we've got Karma, we've got Twisted Fate. Now we're getting into the very fringe picks. Every single one of those top picks has been removed, either picked or banned by either team, which means Fun Fun is kind of stepping into unfamiliar territory here. And now I'm like, okay, well, what does what do we see from Fun Fun? Because You've also got to be very cautious about what you decide to lock in, because whatever you can do, there's Silas can do too. So, yeah, there's the Syndra gone. So, I imagine we are going to see the, the mid laner locked in here and then wait for CJJ until later on to get a counter pick for him. It looks like it might be the LeBlanc actually who snuck her way through the draft. Yeah, LeBlanc definitely fell out of favor in the mid lane. It was something that was very, very high priority at the start of the split. We're seeing less and less of it, though. Is the Renekton going to be the decision here for CJJ up in the top side, but also a takeaway from Morgan? So if I'm now on WE side, there is the opportunity here to go towards something like the Kennen, which I think could work super well, because you can go aggressive against the Renekton in the top lane. As everyone from E-Stars is jumping in, you get this easy Maelstrom as well. And we've seen it from Morgan in the past. Plus, look at the setup that you have. Well, I was going to say you got great dive buddies, but Wukong also does just that. Yeah, I mean, he's still for fulfills a very similar role in a team fight as the Kennen will. Just not quite as dominant during the laning phase. So Morgan will uh, be bullied a little bit by CJJ during that early laning phase, but I'm sure Morgan will be able to survive that one. Now missing, looking towards the Leona, we know how much he loves these hard engaged champions. And it sets up for a very dive focused composition from WE. We've seen though in the past that Bard, if he's able to use that tempered fate to slow down this engage where you could pick off, say, 
the likes of uh, Beishang on this set, where he's slow and our Missy can't quite follow up, that uh, uncoordinated engage can be to the detriment of WE, and Eastar can't capitalize. Especially when you've got something like Nazir, his last lock-in for Fun Fun. He's going to be so good at resetting these fights, so if you're not getting that quick 1-2 combo, you can have Eastar run away with these two fights. Well, if there's one thing Set's good at, it's the one-two combo. That is his passive after it's all. It's true, yeah. So we'll have to see. WE certainly with a lot of all-in potential. Every single one of these champions wants to go in. Even the Ezreal, while you know him as that ranged carry that wants to kite, when the rest of the team goes in, he can definitely follow up on that kind of play. So E-Star, it's going to be about trying to kite out a little bit and trying to survive some of the all-in engage that we'll see out of WE. But that'll be the question is, can they pull that off? And now... For E-Star as well, there's a good amount of counter engage. If the fights go on a long time, they're going to be feeling really good. And they've also got some decent late game skill as well now, thanks to that Azir. So this is really going to come down to how these 5v5s work together. And if we get to that later game point where the Azir is going to have that big carry potential. The problem that we're seeing though an awful lot of the times at E-Star is that when they get to those late game fights, they're not quite able to set up to allow something like an Azir or even Rat on this Ash to have, or at least enable their full potential. So this is where Eastar are gonna have to work it out because one false mood and WE are gonna take them down. Rat did look amazing in game number one though. He's been really impressing me, or at least has really impressed me to date with Jin. And I'm hoping he can do a similar thing with the Ash. We've seen him play it a few times before. The rookie stepping in for Eastar. We'll see if he can maintain this performance as we jump into game number two. And E-Star, they started things off well in game number one. We need to see a repeat of that game one early game. This time, they need to try and close things out. And let's have a look at that early game. Because we do have Wei on this Volley Bear who can clear incredibly quickly and start to have an impact in those early stages a little bit faster than Beishang. But we have definitely seen that Set is more than capable when you've got some setup in getting into these lanes and being such a nuisance. And in my eyes, when I see how strong Missing is, if you can coordinate these plays between Mission, Missing and Beishang towards mid, even towards bot lane to a certain extent, you can get these turnaround kills. So we are going to see once again Teachamar with the fleet footwork in the mid lane, especially against an Azir. You're going to need that. Fun Fun looking towards the team fights though, has the lethal tempo, not the Comet. So not just looking to straight up bully in the early game, Morgan going to find himself a favorable trade. Now, I mentioned before, Renekton favored in this matchup, but at level one, with the Conqueror in play, Morgan can trade very well. Yeah, it's definitely a, a bit of back and forth here. As CJJ, as a Renekton in general, you tend to spike a little bit harder than level two, level three, when you get access to a bit more of your combo. And with the pressed attack as well, you want that Ruthless Predator to easily stack that, and then you can really deal the damage. But we're going to jump Mung's runes here. Has been a, a bit of a back and forth conversation between Lethal Tempo and Conqueror, but Joe Mung op opting for that Lethal Tempo here. And honestly, it just, from what I've heard from a couple of pros, is more so it's not actually that big of a difference maker. It's more so how you feel and what your present or your preference is. I think it does depend as well if you're going to focus more on trying to get your cues out and play from range, or if you're going to be in the middle of these team fights getting auto attacks out, right? Because that attack speed is going to be much more valuable in an all-in situation. Guess what kind of composition WE have for themselves? They're looking to run in. They're looking to get in the middle of these skirmishes. So John Mung will be able to use that attack speed pretty effectively during those kinds of team fight situations. Nice little stun there from Shao C, but you don't expect too much of a follow-up this early on. Now, the good thing when we look towards East Star side is I hold my breath. Yeah, Shao C takes a couple of hits here. Tempo comes in for Joel Mung as he's going to be able to continue to blast out those shots there. Bei Shung moving into the mid lane as well, but Fun Fun's on his hit, so everything's fine. And this is what I wanted to highlight is that East Star actually have winning lanes across the board. CJJ does fine against Morgan. Fun Fun, because the range advantage and as we just saw, the ability to scoot his way out of that lane. And Rat and Chelsea having a nice, well, after that first buy, should have the push power and be able to dissuade any sort of engage from missing. So this is giving free range to Wei, and I want to see what he's capable of doing when he's got such a favorable matchup for himself. So we're gonna see junglers on either side of the map grab themselves the Scuttle Crabs, but it's Wei moving up to the top side. He's not gonna recall just yet. He's gonna go grab himself the Krugs, 
And then we'll see where he goes next with that one. But Beishang already recalled here, so he has the opportunity to get back out on the map first. He will be back out on the map first, but as you can see, look, B-Stars have just shoved in fully. Uh, Wei will be able to pick up a little bit more of his items. Obviously, clearing that Krugs, he'll be able to either go towards an extra Boots or something like a... Uh, a ruby crystal I think he might just be shy on but it still gives him a little bit of an advantage here in if you end up in this 2v2 where Wei will just have that slight edge on the items but I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference here as we start to move forward. So Dagda, game number one we saw I think it was by 30 minutes there was about 45 kills. I was going to ask are we going to see the same thing? Fun Fun is worried that that might be the case here because the flash has come forward. Beishong with the smite to slow things down. Fun Fun surely goes down here. First blood for Beishong. Great job from Beishang. Having that Nimbus Cloak means that he's always going to be able to get in range after smiting to get the face breaker and can run Fun Fun down and easing up a little bit of pressure onto Teacher Ma who has definitely with the Silas added another champion to his yeah, this is looking fantastic for him. And he's got the wave in a perfect spot as well. Funfun should be able to shove this underneath the tower eventually, but Teachamar is doing his very best to just freeze this as long as he can. And Funfun now, with no summoners available, could be a prime target just for a regank from Beishon. And that's what I'm thinking as well, Munch, is you can actually look to go towards your wolves. You're going to have this bottom, these bottom lane camps spawning in just a couple of moments. So you can either move in after Raptors and or go for a gank towards mid, back in towards your Raptors and finish off those Krugs. But Fun Fun, a little bit wary of that himself, decides he needs a ward on that bottom side to try and dissuade that play. Yeah, going to be trying to spot out if Beisheng does try and move in here. Shao Si returning to the lane, obviously on this Bard. You'll see him zipping about the map every now and then. Jomung trying to get what poke he can down whenever he can. And he will have a little bit of a CS advantage in that bottom side as well. Obviously, the numbers are even right now, but the wave is pushing in towards Jormung, so he'll have an opportunity to build a little lead for himself. And I want to say, like, echo your point there, Munch, of I want to see both these supports getting out of the map and having influence. When you're in an Ezreal lane, you want to try and roam as missing. You've got so many advantages. Jomung can farm from range, even go to stop the back Ooh. here. Nicely done by Jomung. But it's tasty. It does mean, hey, look, Missing can have impact towards this mid lane. You've now got Flash blown onto Fun Fun for another, what, three, two minutes? Or three minutes even? Make these plays work. Start setting yourself up with these advantages and working in conjunction with Beishang. Even if it means going into the enemy jungle and trying to invade onto Wei, but they're going to start things off nice and lightly here first with this dragon going their way. You know it's not been that exciting of a game so far when somebody's recall gets stopped and I'm like, oh, we got some action. That's the best we get so far. From Obviously an analyst we point of view, though, it's like, oh, he stopped the back, he can't get that first item purchase. Now you got Jomung, who's actually opting for the pickaxe over the tier, so he's got more battling power, which is why they're going for Dragon. But yeah, I can see. I get excited by stupid things. He sold a biscuit. <laughs> he sold a biscuit. As an analyst, you should be excited. That's another chunk of gold going the way of Rat. Still going to keep two biscuits, though. <laughs> so, you know, investing in future money or mana regen or health. Huh? Huh? Ah. Ah? Well, that's actually like the argument a lot of the time for the inspiration three is that it's kind of this uh, investing gold. in the future because yeah. hey, look, you got your magic market. Footwear. Ah, well, I futures see what market you're doing is here. kind of more about like hey, my first item is like <laughs> like a victor is super important, but like I get my magical fo footwear. It's cool. There's gold that can come into it, and as you said, selling biscuits where there's a bit more gold that I can sell as well, even if I don't end up in using them in the trade. So, I mean, that's kind of the where inspiration three is is like hey, look, it's a lot more about getting some of this gold in your life. Uh, we've got Wei moving down to the bottom side of the map here. Missing's going to face check this one. He is on Leona, but that's the arrow flashed away from. But he's flashed into a wall there. He's probably going to go down for that one. Eclipse still in play, but that's going to be a big old bear jumping on top of his head. Now Beishung looking to answer the play on the top side. CJJ is the target and a showstopper slams him down. One for one across the map here. Shao Si trying to now zone Jomung off of this bottom side though, so Eastar can capitalize on the plates. Looks like they're going to do just that on the top end as well, although Jomung might be able to try and force this back. He's close to six and can clear out the wave if he can get access to that barrage. They might even move on towards that Herald here, but it looks like the recall's just going to come through from Morgan. They don't want to, excuse me, they don't want to overstep on the play here. Is John Wong just trading, desperately trying to keep these plates alive? As you say, we'll be able to do so. Let's take another look at what happened. Look, CJJ trying to trade too aggressively. He doesn't. I like that he didn't use the flash here because you can have 
a lot of catch-up potential coming through from Bei Shang, even with that face breaker. He can get through, come in again with the ultimate and really stop you from escaping. So CJJ realizing he's dead, but he is doing a good job, at least in this top side, of getting an advantage for himself. 25 CS lead at the moment. He's going through that towards that Bay of the Rune King, which will keep him relevant for far longer in this lane. Oh, nice little dodge there from Fun Fun. Means he will be able to win out this trade, or will he? And Briz divides on both sides, but missing is here to try and capitalize. Flash still on cooldown, only just, but it's good enough for them. Fun Fun will go down, and Joe Mung arrives just in time to grab the kill. Now Wei trying to chase down onto Teach about Kingslayer. Can't keep him safe. But now they found CJJ instead, who has the Dominus on cooldown right now. Beishan gets out with his life for now. Is it Shaozi? Suddenly the target. Morgan's TP'd in and we'll be able to bring down the spear, bonk him on the head. And we wanted to see these supports get involved, but missing is quicker off the bat. Now actually trying to see if he can get on to at least help out, pushing Morgan in, or helping Morgan push in this mid lane. But either way, WE getting a little bit more of an advantage for himself. Yeah, Jormung managed to get himself a kill. Now they get onto the Herald as well. This is looking pretty tasty for WE in the early game. They've got themselves the gold lead this time around. And with Blake still in play, this Herald will only extend that. A nice dodge here from Fun Fun to actually stop what was the original play from Teach Ma, which was get that Emperor's Divide to push Fen Fen over the wall in towards the river. But because he was a little bit late and couldn't quite hit the chains, over commits. And then you've got Eastar who are happy to run them down with Wei flashing over the wall to finish off Teach Ma. But at this point, Eastar needs to just back off. Uh, Wei tries to come in to help CJJ, but. CJJ going aggressive here when you know you've got the TP there available for the Wukong or he can even make it down in time. Just nets Shaozi a death for himself. I actually think if Dominus was available there, maybe that's an entirely different fight. Because CJJ at that point with Dominus, you can pretty much take on the entire world, but wasn't available. Means that they're not going to be able to get anything. And now, Dragon spawn in 45 seconds here, Dagged. Uh, WE, they've got a gold lead, but it's nothing to shout home about just yet. What are we looking at here? The Rift Herald, because Beishang has got that Rift Herald, which means he can force it down in mid lane, use it to create pressure for Eastar that they have to respond. Sorry, Jomung and Missing are so worried about moving into that push. But yeah, they Rightly want to. Rightly so. I know, but WE want to try and use that Rift Herald in the mid lane and try and create pressure there, and Eastar are looking to dissuade that by making plays. Missing's the target, but very tanky. I don't know if he's the best target. Shao C, showstopper underneath the tower. And now you see Beishang just chasing for Rat. They're going to be able to finish off way guaranteed. Can they get the bonus kill as well is the question. Double kill for Jolmung. Rat gets out with his life. The dragon's up in two seconds. You mentioned the Herald. It's going bot this time. WE won everything. Fun Fun has his flash, so Morgan shouldn't be able to get onto this Azir. The teacher mark off in the wings as well. WE, they're going to have their cake and they're going to eat it. Exactly. You've got this Rift Herald play in the bot side. Jomon getting accelerated, which is fantastic for him with all these plates. They get the dragon, they get the pressure mid. It's all coming up WE in game number two. Feels pretty fantastic right here for WE. They're going to grab themselves that Drake. It's a Mountain Soul as well. So something worth fighting for there. If WE can maintain control. They're about 2,000 gold ahead now. And most importantly, the gold is all going the way of Jormung. As Ezreal, you love to see this. You love to get these early items in. It just feels fantastic. I was just thinking, I can't wait for that little graph to pop up that says how far ahead Jomong is. Because yeah. between plates, between the kills, and even, I mean, he's a little bit behind a farm, but that's not going to make a massive difference. He is so damn big right now. Mana Mune completed. Sheen completed. Even the only in Boots of Lucidity completed, which... Uh, we'll give him a bunch of extra CDR at the moment where he can play so aggressive right now. Like This is perfect for Jomung. And once he finishes that Iceborne Gauntlet, it's going to be very difficult for Eastar to try and engage on top of him because CJJ and Wei just won't be able to close that distance. Teach him, uh, I wasn't sure if he was going to try and make his way over the wall there onto Fun Fun. It's not going to happen. But you can see Beishong moving to the bottom side of the map here potentially. Trying to set up a play, maybe even a dive. Definitely just trying to get control. As long as you even threaten the dive on the bottom lane, especially with only that single plate left on the tower, WE can get this. And then you can start to get your rotato potatoes out and move up towards that top side, look towards the next Rift Herald, and try and solidify a bit more of those moves. Now, when you say rotato potatoes, are we talking like the little smiley faces, the little waffle things? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know what they're called. Rotate potatoes. Rotate potatoes. Clearly. Okay. Yes, yes. We've just established that. 
I mean, I don't know if they're just an Irish and a UK thing. Because we were talking they're to definitely Lyric. Because we are talking to Lyric that apparently people don't realize that potato waffles exist in the US. Well, they just call them potato smileys. They don't realize no, that the they actual are miniature waffles. The square waffles. Yeah, but even the smileys are miniature waffles. And Beishang looking to make a waffle out of way right now. Morgan comes in spinning around, knocking everybody up to the sky. But it's Beishang to fall first. One for one right now. Is Team Shumar struggling to find a way into the play here? Morgan as well has to flash over the wall, but CJJ and Fun Fun follow him. E Star with a really great fight. Nice job from E Star to turn that one around. And now they can put a little bit more pressure. Teach him, uh, can he get out? He knows what's up. He knows that he was in trouble there. So teleports out, zips away from the play. Just about managing to escape. But hey, we said, look, WE are looking to start moving around the map. They want to solidify these leads. But right, nice read in, from Eastars to shut that down. In the meantime, Rat just tried to make a solo kill happen in the bottom side as well. Went for the Crystal Arrow. Didn't quite connect onto Jomung, though. Jomung still had the cleanse, so a brave call from Rat. I don't know if uh, Jomung would have had too much issue there, especially with how strong he is. You see like there, he maybe five turret plates. He's already got that Iceborne Gauntlet now well, completed. He, he just a, I know he did, up. I know he yeah, did yeah, yeah. but he does have that Iceborne Gauntlet completed. And here we go, here's the replay of this fight where Chelsea already have to make it up towards his top side. And Morgan going a little bit too deep on this play when there's just so many members of East Stars that are able to turn this round. Nice tempered fate there from Chelsea as well to just set this off. Here we go. Teacher was on the wrong side of this play right here. Has a Dominus, so at least he's a little bit tankier and does return a good amount of damage. Base strong arriving, but he's just a split second too late there. And it means the top lane, or the mid lane, sorry, goes down in the top lane instead. Xiaosi might be the answer here, but Jomon can't quite finish off the kill. Morgan's still down in this bottom lane, though. Going to start pushing in towards this tier two. WE can threaten this mid lane structure, but yeah, Eastar are starting to find these picks, starting to creep this gold back a bit over towards their side. And WE need to really just start cleaning things up. You do have a minute until that next dragon spawns. Rift Herald has just popped up on the map as well. I wouldn't be surprised to see Eastar or, or Eastar maybe even try to contest this as, uh, or sorry, before WE can get back onto the map. Properly. It's gonna be 55 seconds until that Drake. Importantly, there is a Herald on the map as well. Look at Joe Monk's gold on the left of your <laughs> screen. My goodness. I mean, CJJ is very close to him, but when you compare him to Rat, Rat is all the way down to the bottom. There's a 2,000 gold difference between the 80 characters. But Fun Fun is doing a pretty good job for himself. And, oh, hang on. It's not going to kill him, but either way. Hey, you talked about the dragon coming up in 30 seconds. Yeah. That delayed recall could be a big impact. Exactly. And as you're looking at Fun Fun, who has the Nashos 2 now completed, also got that last chapter. Well, won't upgrade to the Luton's Echo for a little while, I assume. But still, you're going to be in really good shape here for Fun Fun as we move into these fights. And remember what we talked about where WE are looking for this very quick combo between Morgan, Beishang, Pichama, and Missy. Well, if you can try and dissuade that as Fun Fun reset this fight, have Shelsey using this tempered fate to make it a bit more, less coordinated on WE's side, that could work out great. Jomon dodges out from the arrows, missing that's the target away. Went way too deep on this one. Solar Flare on four people. The CJJ surviving and getting into the team as Morgan tears through everyone on the back line. CJJ cannot take on the enemy top lane, and now he'll be locked up and taken down as well. And Briz Divide, though, Fun Fun looking to make the play. Hunt Teach My is two going their way. Missing will fall as well, but it's all on Jomon. Jumps on in, answers for the kill, but missing falls as well. And Rat's the only one left. As somehow Eastar managed to turn that one around, Chelsea went down with his temper fate, and I called it quits for Eastar. I thought it was going to be WE all around, but Fun Fun with the hero play on this Azir will mean that Eastars will take the fight and they'll take that dragon. That was damn close, but Eastar come out on top at the end. Rat, the entire time was just free firing in this fight. Got himself a triple kill and got himself some much needed gold. And as we talked about, trying to answer for how far Jomung was ahead, but Chelsea here, I thought, okay, this is where we're going to see the temper. They come in, try and separate out this fight, but you look at how much co that combo can work out for Eastar. Luckily enough, Rast does manage to escape, and then when we get this turnaround play coming through from Eastar, Fun Fun free hitting onto multiple people here. Fantastic call to realize, hey, look, with this Emperor's Divide and me being able to flash back over to safety, we can turn this Rast. And Eastar just about managed to eke out that fight. Jomong doing his best there. I think the panic flash at the end as well. 
It was a damn close fight, and you can see the damage numbers. Both Joe Mung and Fun Fun trying to carry that fight, but Rat was there just beneath the top damage, trying to get those autos in and managed to get himself triple killed. Now, with a huge injection of gold, he's going to be feeling much better. He went from a Blade of the Rune King to a, Rune, to a Blade of the Rune King and a Rune Ends Hurricane on top. Yeah, triple kills would do that to you, you know? <laughs> so yeah. now we're moving in with Fun Fun. We already highlighted how strong he is. Phoenix Codex now in hand. He's going to be working up towards his second item as well. So we're starting to see that late game creep coming in from E Stars. And with a couple of mistakes from WE where it hasn't been as clean, E Stars are capitalizing. E Stars are feeling pretty fantastic right now off the back of that fight. Nash's toot there in the mid lane for Fun Fun. And he'll be heading towards his second item as well shortly. So now. It's going to be another three minutes until we see any shenanigans off the dragon, but Faish grabbed himself a Rift Herald. So the question is, what can they do with it? John Monk dodges away from the Crystalline Arrow, and it's good that he did, because the whole squad is here. E-Star just going to barrel down the mid lane and grab themselves a tower. A lot of flanky members from WE. I thought we might have seen an engage there, but E-Star do a good job of getting out of that. So tower goes down, E-Star find themselves with that gold lead, and now... I mean, we're looking at three minutes until that dragon. However, there is still like the likes that Baron that's starting to come up. We can still see a bit of uh, shenanigans as both teams would be looking to try and get vision control around that. Because between the composition that WWE has and also what E-Star have, they can take this objective very quickly. So my question is, when we've got things like an Azir in the game, it always feels like scaling generally will go in the direction of that Azir. And Ash does very well in the late game as well. But at what point does that come up through here? Hang on, we got way caught out in the jungle. Rat's here to try and support him, but doesn't have the damage right now. Kill goes the way of Joe Mung, and he wants Fun Fun as well. Jumps over the wall here, Fun Fun getting out with his life, but Teach him up, flashing. Won't quite get the kill though. It's only gonna be one pick for WE. I don't think that's enough to try and force anything. A Space Junk, I'm pretty sure was trying to walk. I have a feeling he was as well, but either way, you can still use this Rift Herald, it can go towards mid, actually TP now to try and keep this mid turret safe. I think it went top. Okay, well, they got a charge. I I don't know, mate. <laughs> Suboptimal, I think is I the mean, word. I don't even get the mid lane turret, CJJ is being a nuisance on this bottom lane. We <laughs> They're about all him. pinging it. Look at the question mark things on the Herald. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But here's the thing. Come on, base. These are mistakes mate. from WWE. CJJ just got a Terra buff. You don't get any answer coming in from WE. And now, as he talked about, look, Fun Fun, he will get to the point where he'll be monstrous. But to be honest, he's already capable of having big impacts in these fights because of the reset the Empress the Five gives. Same with Chelsea. This is only going to be coming, like, this already is a game of execution. But E Stars have that late game draw as well. The only thing I will point out is that there's always an opportunity for Morgan who will eventually be able to take over in the side lane to force CJJ in, start to draw out these teleports from E-Stars and maybe Morgan can look to play through a side lane and then use that teleport to first force numbers advantages or even find flanks onto E-Star where they're not able to deal with it correctly. Well, the king of the flip-flop himself, Mr. Colonel down on the bottom of your screen, cannot decide who's the... Uh favorable team here. He's given E-Star a 55% win ratio right now, but yeah, I don't know. He was he was leaning the way of WE just a minute ago, so never trust the Colonel, that's what I say. Unless it's about chicken. But that's a separate conversation for another time, because there are no Galios in this game, but there is an Azir. And I've had Roast Pigeon before. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, WE got to teach him out looking for that big engage, but here we go. Showstopper on to everyone. There's Space Breaker. What a Wombo combo. Chelsea's like, stop everyone. Whatever you're doing, stop right now. Fun Fun is the one to go down. WE win out the fight here. Three of E-Star get away. And that's the combo Chelsea needs to be able to stop. That's what Fun Fun needs to try and disengage from. But when it comes that coordinated that quickly, Woo. blink and you've missed it as your health bars are gone at the win. That looked fucking great. WE, I just swore on broadcast. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> but it did. I'm not wrong. Twice. Twice. <laughs> twice recently. Uh, I'm going to get fined. I'm going to get fired. Oh, well. 
Dragon goes down here. WE on soul point for themselves. Chelsea with a great temper fate there, but that kind of combo, that's what we know WE for, the coordinated team. And it looks so good. Fei Shang sitting here waiting for the perfect moment, grabs Wei, the biggest guy on this team, flashes in for the face breaker, and here you go. Just how quickly this can turn around. Teach him as well, crucially, having the, uh, the ultimate from the Volley Bear. Adds a little bit more depth, especially when you got that Archangel, uh, our true shot barrage across the entire team. It is disgusting to watch. Just the wombo combo there. Morgan spinning around in the midst of everything as well. And well, we were talking about the AD carries. We we're talking about a bit of gold going the way of Rat, but Joe Mung once again takes the lead. He's now got himself that death stand. So that three item spike that we always talk about with Ezreal's, Joe Mung isn't going to get any stronger for the rest of the game. He's now firing on all cylinders. He still will ramp up a little bit, though. Like, you but, still heard But he's in context of the whole yes, game, right? I everyone else will also ramp up. So he is as strong comparatively to everyone as he's getting yet. And I want to say as well, you've got that three dragon spike here as well, coming through for WE, where they can now force these engagements at the dragon. And already you can see with Morgan, he's going hell for leather on trying to find these fights rather than trying to deal with CJJ in a side. See CJJ. Pushing that wave all the way underneath the inhibitor tower here. Now moving up towards the rest of his team. Trying to find a flank. And WE got to respect that moving away. As Teachamart answers on the top side. Obviously the Herald hit that tier 2 well earlier on in the game. So there's a potential that Teachamart could finish a tower. I think he's just going to recall for now. Yeah, it's a little bit too far forward. As Easter actually group is 5 and are pushing him mid. So maybe this is where Teachamart goes, okay, I'm going to look to trade. But there's the arrow. On, arrow onto missing. He's tanky, but he's against 5 players right now. Beishung moving into the play as well, but I don't know, it's not much of a play to move into for him. CJJ on the back line trying to finish off missing, will be able to get the one kill, trades his life for it. In the meantime, Morgan doing a lot of work, takes down Funford. Somehow, WE have won this fight. I don't know how they pulled this one out of the bag, but Wei will get chased down by the Monkey King himself as the rest of the team goes mid. They can now shove in this wave. They could potentially even turn towards Baron as Wei will just about manage to escape. But Baron is on the cards for WE, and that's where they're going to turn. Yeah, Wei going to sprint off into the jungle, get himself to safety here. But Joe Mung is still around. They've got the damage to finish off a of Baron. And Morgan is not letting Wei recall. And it's not because Morgan is trying to get the kill. He's just denying any chance for Wei to get over to this Baron and contest. And this is so well played by WE. And unfortunately for E-Stars, they got a little bit too greedy. They tried to go in towards this jungle corridor, Speaking as we're going to see on the replay. <laughs> nah, he'll be okay. He can hop back out of here. He's got impaired recall. He'll be great. But when we look at the replay here, this is where it's E-Star end up very separated. So you do have to pick that lands on to missing, but watch where WE are positioned. Beishan comes in, he zones Rat, he zones Fun Fun. So there's not like there's a lot of damage that are coming through. Teacher Ma again is threatening that back line, pushes E-Star away once more. So how much damage is actually put, come out from Fun Fun and also from this Ash is pretty negligible before they hit the ground. And that's where WE are just able to get so much more damage pumped out in this fight. Morgan and Teachama basically 2v4 during that fight. Great use of Zonyas as well out of Teachama to survive. And in the meantime, Joe Mung is able to just free fire onto the croc, annihilate him, and then clean up the rest of the squad. Exactly. And that's the big difference maker here is just the damage output from these parries is so damn high on WE in that type of scenario. WE look to punish. Now they've got Baron, they can push in multiple different waves. Joe Mung will at least crack open this outer turret. That's the second one under their belts as WE can now rotate down to this bottom lane and get that yeah. last one. Remember a minute ago when I said that uh, Ezreal's the strongest comparatively to everyone he's going to get? I wasn't expecting him to immediately fully buy a Blade of the Rune King on top of everything else. So I'll admit I was wrong on that one. Now Teacher Mark going to be the target, but Kingslayer keeps him safe for now. We'll jump away from the place. Going to be followed as Jomon gets the kill down onto Shao Si. I don't think there's any way E-Star can contest any more. Great true shot barrage. Fun fun with a good ult. But he's taken down as a double goes through for Jomung. And now straight into the base. In fact, it was a triple kill for the Ezra. 11 1 and 6 there for Jomong. He wants to not only match Knight when it comes to MVPs, he wants to add one more to his plate and try and take that top spot. And WE looking to close out this game. <laughs> CJJ, you do not get to leave your fountain. Go back home, Mr. Crocodile, says Jomong. He wants one more kill. He wants some bonuses here as the Nexus will fall. And WE continue to climb those standings. They get their ninth win.
and they lock themselves in for playoffs. They are looking... Well, it was a little bit shaky, to be honest, but at least they have now added to that ninth win. We still have to wait to see what that result is from oh, RNG see, versus yeah. Top Esports later. But honestly, with the way Top Esports have been playing and the unfortunate form for RNG, it does feel like with this win, WE have locked themselves in for that playoff spot. Yeah, I did misspeak there. They haven't technically locked themselves in, but they're on nine wins, so... It's very unlikely yeah. that they don't make it in at this point as well. They're on positive seven game difference, so... Even if a team like EDG or RNG or Vici is able to contest in terms of a tie on game difference, it's going to be very difficult to catch up to WE. It's a little bit grim as well if you're a BLG fan or any of those guys, because those wins that were maybe looking like they could potentially push into that playoff spot with their